and you might decide one day, like, you know what, this bit of UI, this list of products there, these top products, we want to move that rendering to the server with RSC. So how do you move rendering to the server in React Router v7? Well, you select your code that you want to move to the server, and then you move it <laughs> to the server. And then you come down here, and you look at this product thing, and you're like, what is what, what is that? Well, it's, I guess it's some stuff that I can render. Oh my goodness, look at this. As you already guessed from the title of the video, it's all about React server components and when they're coming out. So, in order for React Router to use React server components, there are two things that are missing at the moment. And the first thing is the React 19 stable release. So, React 19. Unlike some other frameworks that like to use unstable, whoops, so how did this end up on the screen? Unstable versions of React and Canary releases, React Router is actually waiting for the React 19 stable release to come out in order to give you React server components. And if you're wondering why that is, well, the reason is because React 19 and onwards will have React server components. So they're not a part of React 18 or earlier. And if we switch to the React blog, you can see that they talked about React 19 release candidate back in April 25th of 2024, and that was roughly half a year ago. And there's a lot of new features that I'm not going to cover in this video because that's not the topic. You can actually find this on their official React 19 blog, or rather the React docs not the blog. So the current stable release is version 18, so 18.3.1. And if I scroll back to the top, you can see the sentence here. For a list of breaking changes, see the upgrade guide. And if I switch to the upgrade guide, in the change log, we can see the other breaking changes. And if you're wondering why React hasn't come out in the last like half a year, and the release candidate was supposed to be released very shortly after the reveal, well, the reason is this, don't pre-render siblings of suspended content. So how it worked before, if I switch over to Stack Blitz, I just made this really contrived example here, just so I can show you what I mean. So if you had a suspense boundary and it was wrapping two children, so a child one component and a child two component, and let's say this child one component was fetching something and the child two component was fetching something as well, well, what would happen in React 18 is child 1 and child 2 would fire in parallel, which means that they would fetch the data in parallel and load it probably faster because there was no waterfall. But what they did with React 19 is they made it so that child 1 would fetch, it would stop all the siblings from fetching, and then once that's done, child 2 would start fetching, child 3 would st start fetching if there was one, and so on and so forth, and it would just go on and on. So it would basically create a big waterfall effect in your applications. And the reason this sucks is because if you relied on this behavior and you expect it to work from React 18 to React 19, it wouldn't. And it would be a huge breaking change for most of the apps that relied on parallel fetching because you would s suddenly have a waterfall effect which could slow down your applications by like a lot and there was a big fuss on twitter about it dominic the creator uh, the main maintainer of react query or test stack query whatever you like to call it he called this out and the react team kind of gave in and decided to change it and they've been changing it for the last half year because a lot of changes that they made with the new features relied on this functionality. So now they have to go back to the drawing board and do it all over again and fix everything that's not working with the change. So that's the first thing that needs to land. So React 19. And as I already said, it's really delayed and I have no idea when it's gonna land officially. I was hoping it will land by like September, October, but I guess this small breaking change was bigger than we thought. While we wait for that, there's another thing that needs to come out for React Server components to work with Remix or React Router. And the second thing is, if I go back to our drawing board, and the second thing is the Vit Environments API. So this is really cool. And it's actually not really cool if you're an application developer, 
if you're an application developer you probably don't care about this because this is more of a thing for plugin developers and the reason i'm excited for this is because if you developed any sort of plugin with tweet or you wanted to create your own framework or you wanted to have a complex setup it was really hard to do and the reason behind that is explained in the first sentence here so until v5 there were two implicit environments and the first one was client and the other one was the optional server-side rendering and there's a lot of frameworks out there that actually need more than these th two things and you need to orchestrate a more complex environment and for example let's say you were doing something with cloudflare you would probably want a worker d instance you would maybe want your serverless server to run locally you would want some third thing to run locally then you would want your client to render and stuff like that so it really depends on the application that you're working on but this was not possible to do before or rather it maybe was possible but you had to have a lot of workarounds and it was really hard to pull off so what they're doing with version 6 is they're not going to have the client and the server environments anymore or for compatibility reasons they will have those two so that it works from the v5 to v6 migration so a huge thing about wheat is they they care about backward compatibility and a lot of this new stuff is going to be incremental so until all the framework authors in the wheat ecosystem move to environments api it's going to be easy to use the old stuff and just rely on that for the time being until it's deprecated in v7 that is coming god knows when and v7 hasn't come out yet anyways so the environment api here that we're looking at is coming with v6 and it's already been kind of tested out by framework authors and they're still working on it so i have no idea when it's coming out but it's probably in the next few months the same as react 19 and i'm gonna scroll down here to this image because this is a great example of what the Vit environment CPI is going to allow you to do. So if you look at the VDev server here, so that's the, this big box. It has a lot of features built in like HTTP server, middlewares, web sockets, plugins, pipeline. And this has nothing to do with your production build or anything. This is the development server. So this is used by authors of frameworks and plugin authors to actually build their own plugins, build their own frameworks on top of it. And let's say you wanted to have a complex environment where, for example, you have the browser environment here, the node environment, then the worker D environment. Maybe you want to for example, run your end-to-end -end tests at the same time, like in real time, or you want to run your unit tests at the same time. I mean, like the, the possibilities here are endless, so you can orchestrate whatever you want. Now you can do that. And how you do that is you instantiate the environments you need. So for example, this would be your first environment, the browser environment, then you had the node environment here, then you have your retest JS DOM environment and the worker D environment. And then you have separate runtimes for each environment and you can mess around with the API. It's really easy to create environments so if i show it to you here you have the environments here and for example this allows you to configure your environments from the root of the vid config so for example we have the server environment the edge environment and all of them can have different configurations because maybe you want some configurations in one environment that you don't want in another one and this is a really cool way to actually achieve that and if I scroll down a bit, you can see, for example, here in the import that it's from a Vite environment provider. So this would be an example of how to use a framework that exports a custom environment and then you plug it in. Or even what could happen in the end is that the framework provides a plugin that you just plug in into your Vite config and they set up the environments API on their own. There's a lot of possibilities. It just depends on the plugin author. And the cool thing I want to show you is uh, this. So this is another part of the environment API and you're going to be able to access your current environment with this dot environment. And why this is huge. So let's step back a little bit. So before this in read five, you, you had your, if I scroll down, so here, the old approach was if you wanted to check if it's an SSR environment, you would do options.ssr in the resolve ID. 
or anywhere else you could access it through some other ways like resolve config and stuff like that or in the server as well and then you would check if it's an ssr build or not and then you would do if else and like i said before there was no way for you to easily add like five environments here and now all of that is not the case and now it's possible to add multiple environments and each environment will expose itself through this dot environment so for example if you had a client environment you could do this environment dot name and check if it's the client environment if you were doing something with worker d's for example this environment dot name would be worker d and then if it's a worker d you could bootstrap it in some way for the user and do something very specific with it like most of cloudflare stuff and then you have your hot module reloads and the hot update plugin hook that's also new with the environments API and the cool thing about it is if I scroll down here so hot updates and hot module reloads were kind of tricky because like I said it's very hard to orchestrate a lot of moving parts in v5 so the cool thing about this is for example, let's say your worker D environment wants to hot module reload and how you can do that because now you have access to this dot environment you can check the module graph of this environment that you're currently in invalidate the modules for example so this would invalidate them in the sense hey they need to hot module reload and then it would send a full reload message and for example this would be handled somewhere that full reloads your page or something like that so you can be very granular about your hot module reloads and what hot module reloads so this is really cool because let's say you change something on your server the server will not trigger a hot module reload for the whole application it will just do it for the server the client as well so for example if you change something in the react component it can just hot module reload the react component doesn't touch the server doesn't touch anything else and this is also really cool and also if i go back to the back for compatibility part you can see that the current feed server api or apis are not yet deprecated and are backward compatible with v5 and like i said this is st still new and experimental it's not gonna be a matter of hey you completely change your underlying architecture like overnight this will probably adopted incrementally by the teams because everybody needs to play around with this figure out what they can do and why i'm excited about this is because you can for example build your plugins to run custom environments unrelated from the development server so for example if you wanted to create a plugin that would run end-to-end -end tests in real time whenever you do changes you could for example say hey use a new environment called end-to-end -end. you bootstrap it you run it and then it runs in parallel to your actual application and then whenever you do hot module reloads here in this environment for the end-to-end -end test you say hey this changed rerun the tests and then it reruns the tests now that is one example i think a better one is unit tests because they are faster but this opens up a sea of possibilities and i'm guessing the v team will probably add a v plugin that actually does this so we'll have to wait and see but this is really cool and i think this will open up so many possibilities for framework authors where they can build a lot of parallel environments that in development can be used to debug your apps unit test them and then test them get some i don't know some new experiences that we haven't seen before so yeah i'm really excited about this and i know that as an application developer you don't really care and what you're just gonna do is probably this so import something and then just plug it in and you're good to go for remix for any framework out there that uses weed so basically almost all of them with the exception of one i think oh how did this end up on the screen again and i think that's pretty cool so when these two things land in production so when they're stable and released all the react router team needs to do is use these new apis implement them into react router and there we have react server components built into react router now when this is gonna happen i can't really tell because we are waiting for the environment api to launch we are waiting for react 19 to launch 
and when these two things launch i think we're gonna get react server components really fast in react router i know that they already implemented it as a poc and ryan already as you saw in the beginning of the video showed you how to do it and how it's gonna look like maybe they make some improvements in the future that we are not gonna foresee at the moment but yeah that's it that's how we get react server components in react router and now for the youtube stuff Thank you for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Like the video, share it with others and let me know what you think. That's it for today and see you in the next one. Bye!